And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. All right, we are privileged to have the former welterweight champion, the, the guy that was the pound for pound best in the world, the Nigerian nightmare, Kamaro Usman. My man, how are you doing? You're looking good. Fancy red seats in that vehicle. I want to know what you have. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I bought these, uh, you know, off a guy in New York, just like, you know, seat covers <laughs> to make the car look fancy. So you're that's looking you like my background. I'm feeling fancy. good. Yeah, you gotta you gotta make the car look fancy for a you go. not so fancy price. All right, I like that. That is not seat covers. That's real leather, isn't <laughs> that it? That is totally oh, he's stiff. He's here trying dude. to lie, make, making us poor people feel wants. good. It's all right, man. He's making hey. us poor people feel good. <laughs> I want to show him my farm truck, man. With my yeah, you know, I, I do have those things put over the top. <laughs> hey, those farm trucks though can get expensive. Some of those clean ratchets, <laughs> man, they get up there. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Hey, so, so my, we're what, what what time zone are you in? Because we're wondering like what the time zone was in Wakanda. We're trying to figure that out. What's that time zone out there? <laughs> Wakanda, Wakanda is always a beautiful time zone. That's for sure. Uh, but right now I, I'm uh, Eastern, Eastern time zone right now. You out? So you're out in Florida? Yes, yes, yes. Nice, nice. And then what takes you back and forth? I mean, you go out to, are you training mainly in, in Florida right now? Families in Florida right now? So that's kind of like Kill Cliff is your spot or you kind of bounce around a little bit in there? I bounce around a little bit, but my, my daughter's here and my daughter's priority over a lot of things, every, oh, almost everything. So with that being said, yes, when I'm not deep into training, I'm here in Florida. I still have, you know, my, my roots are here in Florida with Henry Hoof mm -hmm. and, and the guys down there now at the uh, Kill Cliff, like you mentioned. So yeah, those, that's my, my roots there so when i'm in florida i have a place to train also i have cosmo alessandra's here george mm -hmm. santiago my jiu-jitsu coach forever is here as well so okay. i I'm, i have a good situation but when i'm in denver everyone knows i'm locked in right there with trevor with me god all right when you as far as your career now you have had just some fantastic back and forth with the guy that just won the title in Bilal muhammad Look, you were the champion for a long time. You had an undefeated record in the UFC until you ended up losing the title. And now you are in the perfect position to be the guy, if you're looking at it, that he has not fought, that is a perfect matchup for him, that is, you know, everything has fallen into place for you. How close are you to making that happen? Is it a perfect matchup for him, or is it a uh, not so no, good per matchup for him? No, perfect matchup of styles because of your wrestling, your stand-up. Mm -hmm. He's got good wrestling. He's His stand-up's come a long way. I mean, it's a it's an absolute difficult fight for both of you. Yeah, so uh, I think perfect matchup for him would be someone like a Leon Edwards, a guy that you just pressure, you can get into his legs, take him down, and just basically do the same thing that I did to Leon Edwards. That's a perfect matchup. For me, this is a very, very difficult matchup. And, I mean, if you really look at it, I would say the same thing. And this is no shade to him because I give respect where respect is due. This is no shade to him, but everything that he does, I do better. Striking, I, I, I strike better. I'm cleaner. I definitely have more power to where I can sit you down. Grappling, more explosive. Just, it's... That's the, that was the situation. It's not, I, I'm kind of now, like you mentioned, I'm in the position of obviously in position of enlightenment. And, you know, with, the, with that, <laughs> that, with enlightenment, that comes experience. You get enlightenment when you have the experience. And so having that experience, I'm just enlightened to the point where it's no shade. I like Bilal. It's no shade at all. But I'm going to be truthful and honest. Everything that you do, I do better. I'm better at. And for a long, long time there, I was in a position to where I was just out here. I was entertaining and entertaining and entertaining was a thing for me. I didn't care what I was going through. I didn't care what I was dealing with. I didn't care what I was battling physically, mentally, emotionally. It, doesn't, it didn't matter to me. I was going to jump in there and perform and perform and perform, which is and, and it was the same thing with Israel at this time, which is why you saw a ton of those title defenses. And I'm sure 
Alexander Volkanovsky, who also came out and expressed that sometime. Uh, we do these things, we jump in and go and go and go to try to entertain the masses. And of course, we get the we, we reap the benefits of that. We get the checks that comes with that. But now it's I'm in a place where, okay, with all of that comes a lot of injuries, all the things that you've been dealing with, it kind of c- catches up to you. And now I'm just in a position to where I'm, I'm trying to heal all of that because you know, you stack up all these injuries over time and it starts to diminish your performances to where people start to forget just how good you are, just how much time you spent uh, building your career, doing the things that made you successful to where they start to, oh, he's washed. Well, which is how disrespectful are MMA fans? <laughs> how disrespectful are they? Oh, he's washed. Oh, he can't do this anymore. He's not that. Oh, they were saying that before John Jones came back in there and fought uh, uh, Surreal Ghan. They yeah, they've, they've, been, they've been holding their tongue for a while because they just wanted you to lose. So as soon as exactly. it happened, they wanted to go out there and say it. But, man, you had one of the most uh, real comments I've ever heard from a champion. Like, after you lost to Tyler, you said it was like this just bricks lifted off my shoulders. Just that there was no pressure anymore. Like, you felt free. And I can't explain it enough to to the average person sitting on the couch wishing you would lose. But man, that's real. That's that's exactly how it is. When you're on a rise and everyone's just trying to come at you, and when you do finally lose, it's like, okay, now we can get past this, and I can just be me. Because you were just trying to do, you're like you said, trying to take care of the masses, trying to entertain everyone, trying to be at every public appearance, signing every every autograph, taking every photo. That it just burns you at both ends. And when that that happens, it's that sense of relief, that pressure off your shoulders. And yet, that was one of the most realist comments I've ever heard from anybody. I just wanted to give right. you some praise on that. Right, right. You And I, I, I talk to these the younger guys now that are around me and ask for kind of some advice and how to approach certain things. And I tell them, enjoy this time. Because a lot of them, uh, of course, you're, you're fighting for one and one. You're, you're broke, quote, unquote, broke, even though you don't really have much bills. But you're quote unquote broke at that time. And so you're fighting for one and one, and you're fighting maybe two or three times a year. And you're just like, man, how do I I get there? How do I get there to where you want to get there? And I say, I just tell them, enjoy this. This is the fun time right now. Yep. All you get to do is come in here. You have so much time to just learn. You train with these guys. Yeah, it's hard practices, but that's life. It's okay. You train with these guys, and then you get to just go home, have a snack, eat what you want to eat, relax, play some video games, or do whatever you have to do, and then you come back and you train again, go home, do that, sleep, wake up, and do the same thing. Say so you were blessed right now. Enjoy yeah. this moment because, yes, I know everyone sees the glitz and the glamour and the lights, and they go, oh, man, that's what I want. I want, I want the outfits. I want the nice shirts, you know, and all this different thing. Yes, that's great. Well, guess what? Once you become champion and you get there, okay, now uh, to fly to New York for a, a two-day press conference. And, and so it's a day flight and I have to get there. I'm there for two days and then I have to fly back. It's three to four days that I just lost right there where the rest of the world, the rest of the guys are just training, going to the gym and training every day. And a big thing that set it, set me apart from everyone is I was willing to do extra. I was willing to do all the work to try to catch up and get there. Then over time, I surpassed everybody. And now when that three days, that's three days I could have worked. I, I'm not working. So I didn't mm-hmm. really improve. I'm there. Make sure your hands are on the wheel. Just, just keep one hand on the wheel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pro driver. Uh, and so those guys are just doing this. Yeah. And so when guys are doing that all the time, it's over time it catches up to you. Mm-hmm. To where guys are like, well, what happened? What what happened is now you have different interests. You have different things that you're doing that are taking you away from that time of just enjoying training and going back and forth to training and just enjoying life. Yeah, so it, it, it catches up to you. And that time, it's not that fun anymore because, no. hey, now you got bills, bills. Now you got problem, problems. <laughs> you yeah, got you real, spent that money yeah. on the, on those red leather seats. You spent that money. <laughs> On the covers, yeah, the seat. Covers. Yeah, yeah, the covers. the covers. Sorry, the covers. My bad, my bad. You know, I, no, I say I say it all the time. I say it all the time that you know, 
when you are the guy who is looking towards that title, you've got that target. But when you're the guy with it, you are the target. And there's nothing for you to get excited about after a while. You know, you'll have the promotional. They'll say, oh, we want you to fight so-and-so. And that could be a fight you're interested in. Or it could be a fight you go, that's a boring fight to me. And you, But you're in that position. What does it feel like to be in the position that you are in now where you've been the champion? You're, you, know, you have everything that someone could really want but you still are in that absolute position to possibly fight for that title again in the next fight. How does that feel to you with all the knowledge that you've gained by being the champion? Being honest, it's kind of, it's a little difficult. It's kind of weird because it's, um, it's like, yeah, I, I know what it feels to be the champion. Uh, that was, is that, is that the motivation? Like, do I just care about that belt or do I care about, having a, a, a spectacular fight, like a fight fight to where I, I say it all the time. And, and I know pe- people people can't believe the fact that I, I would actually go, you know, credit to Kobe Covington because I used to hear it all the time where people say, you need you need a dance partner. You need a great yep. dance partner. And and he was that to where in that fight, in that first fight to where it was it was so much tension to where it it challenged me so much to prepare, to train, and to go out there and just, you get it locked into this zone where it's almost addicting. That zone yeah. where it's just like, I don't care what happens. You got to look at your fight it. career. You got to look at your fight career like a movie. Like you didn't, you need yeah. a nemesis. You know yes. I mean? Connor had Aldo at first and then he had Habib. Like you had Colby. Like if you don't have a nemesis, it's hard to build your name and your reputation to build on that. DC and John Jones, you know, like you have that. I'd say Izzy's probably the one that didn't really have a nemesis until now. You know I mean? At Alex Pajeda, but that came in later. But like he, he was able to build himself up. But like you had Colby the whole time. You know, with right. Bilal though, right. like John was bringing up Bilal. You guys seemed very cordial when you were champion. He never really said anything about you. You guys were never really back and forth. But, you know, now that he's champion, how did all this come about with the trash talk right off the bat? You guys are both managed by Ali, correct? Yeah, yeah, which obviously puts puts Ali in a weird situation. Yeah. Because, <laughs> and, I tell him all, and I tell him all the time, when, I, when he picks up the phone, if we're talking, I'm like, hey, enemy, how you doing, enemy? You're, you're, you're the enemy. Now. Enemy. And he Ruthless. laughs. But it's, um, yeah, it, it's... I guess it's, it's when you become champion, that validates the delusion that you had in your mind the whole time that you were good enough to get there. Mm-hmm. And so once that, that delusion is validated, I think some guys just run with it to where they don't care. They're just like, oh, man, I'm, I'm that good. I'm the champion. I'm that good. So anybody I can beat up, I can beat up anybody. So they start to really, really dive, dive into that to where they just talk crazy to whoever they want to. And I feel like that's kind of the situation here to where his delusion has been validated, just like mine was validated once I, I defeated Tyron Woodley. Mm-hmm. So since that's been validated for him, he just feels that I'm the absolute best. I can do whatever I want to whoever I want, however I want, which in a sense I love because you now that, that presents a challenge of me having to go in there and let him know that, hey, no, you're not there yet, young man. So. If it, if it happens, it happens. I'm not I'm not stressing about it. I'm really not stressing about it. That's the crazy thing. I'm not stressing about it. If it happens, it happens. I take it as it comes. And hey, I just I'm focused on just getting myself somewhat healthy right now. Getting you have like healthy. That's it. Generally, what happens, like so, you win the title, and then when you when you lose the title, though, you start talking. Not just you, but a lot of fighters will start talking about. I need fights that motivate me. Like, because Colby was your motivation, right? Like, Mazadal was the motivation because they were good at chirping. They were good at making sure they got under your skin. They were good at motivating you, getting you in the gym every day. You need that nemesis. Yeah. Uh, but Law seems like he can do that for you again. But are you looking for oh, the yeah. fights that really, really motivate you? Because, like, you've kind of accomplished everything you needed to accomplish. But now you look and you'll hear fighters say, I want the fight that motivates me. I want the fighter that gets me up. Is Bilal that guy? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, you you get that's a great thing to to have. For me, it's I was I learned very early on that it's uh, I'm very self motivated. I am, 
And but I learned very early on that it's it's it's, it's a fight against myself. I always want to prove myself wrong. And a lot of, in a lot of these fights, it was me shocking myself that wow, I really was able to do that. I really fought the the, the battle in my mind to do that. And so with with this now, with, as you saw in my last fight, after losing the title the way that I did, I I for, you forget I forget the the twenty four minutes before that I was just kind of having my way with this guy, and and so. By you forgetting that, it, it's it it rolls into coming back. I came back a little too quick, and I and I could admit that to where you 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 then you lose a, a razor close one, and that's me coming back quick. That's me not healthy. That's me dealing with a lot of things in my mind going to that fight, and he was still razor close. So then you take a fight on nine days' notice. You fly halfway around the world. You fight arguably the scariest guy at the time. And you, you you don't trust yourself. I don't trust some of I don't trust my because I am not in the camp. I am not training like that. I don't trust myself. And so I get in the fight, and then you you I'm like, at the end of it, it's not the result that I wanted, but what it did is, is why are you not trusting yourself? Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Can you hear me? And so for me, yeah. it's just the ability to go out there and prove to myself again that hey, you are, you still, you still that, you still that motherfucker, you still that man. <laughs> You know, still got so, that dog. Yeah, hey, what, 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 you when you dog. when you look back at that last fight with uh, Chimaev, you know I, I I've said it many times. If that was a five round fight, I truly believe you would have won it. Yeah. Uh, you in the you've always been known as a guy who remarkably who's incredibly well muscled, but you have endurance. You can go. You've got a gas tank. And in that fight, it showed that, you know, you took a lot of damage as far as you took shots. You, he didn't really hurt you, I don't think, that bad in the first round. But, you you know, you you were the one that was, as I call it, you were the nail. And he wasn't able to get rid of you. And then you started just building on top of it. And by the end, it seemed like he was exhausted. You weren't even breathing hard. And it was on a nine-day notice. How do you not believe in yourself, God damn it? <laughs> that's, that's, that was the issue. And that's why... Um, Trevor, my coach Trevor Whitman tells me all the time that I, I'm one of the best, I'm if not the best at building in a fight. And for the first time in a long time, I didn't trust myself and my abilities because that fight, I could have, it could have been a five rounder. I could have easily said, hey, you want me to fly around the world and do this? It has to be five rounds. But I didn't trust myself enough because I wasn't training as I, as I would be if I had a fight and I went through a camp. And so with that being said, that I didn't trust myself in that in that sense. So then you get in a fight, and I realize I haven't fought a three round fight in I don't remember last time I fought a three round fight. So I've built myself up to get in a position to where you can build over the course of five rounds. And so now that Breaking. it's not that, it, it was it was very very difficult for me to be okay with that result. My farm needs the earth, the air, and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix. Clean, good tasting energy that feeds me like I feed my plants and animals. And after a long day on the tractor, when it's time to shoot the podcast, I drink Element so that I can stay energized and stay salty. Let's get it on. Yeah, I mean, look, I guess for me, if I wanted to wrap this up with you, brother, I wanted to say one thing. Look, I underestimated you, and I'm sure you probably, because I, I underestimated oh, you I with the Colby fight. Yeah, I know. I knew you knew. Oh, I know. And I knew you knew. I did yeah. not. John, Big, yeah. Big John did not. I did. But <laughs> hey, I have to come clean, man. I owe you all the respect in the world. I was came, I, I basically underestimated you with Colby the first time and even the second time. You know, so I owe you, I owe you, I don't want to say apology, but I got to come up and be like, hey, I'm a man. I said this and I want to give you nothing but the respect, brother. You, you are a fantastic fighter. I'm a huge, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I just, I underestimated your ability to handle the pressure. 
That's what I underestimate. Like the, the constant like cardio pressure. And that's what I was judging that fight based off of. Yeah, it's all good, man. I think it's um, <laughs> it's when you're when you're in it, when you're in the thick of it, it's very you're we're all artists. And I guarantee you when you were fighting, when you would hear certain things about what your abilities and what you potentially could or could not do, yeah. it would it would irk you in a way to where you're like, Oh, what? These guys are talking trash about me. These guys nah. are saying this and saying that. And so Yes, 100%. When you're an artist, you're very sensitive about your craft. And I understand that because I was just the exact same way. You know, I hear, I, I, I would, you know, what made it worse is you guys would say all these things, but your asses would tag me in the damn things. Ah. So they would freaking come through. I followed uh, oh. John at the, and you guys at that time. So it would come through and I would see yeah. these. And you guys, for years, you guys, Douglas Lima would beat Uzma. Douglas Lima would beat Uzma, which Douglas Lima is it fantastic fighter was a great champion and so all these times you i would get sensitive when you're in the thick of it but it's not until you actually get to a point where you're enlightened and you like i am now to where it is what it is you're an athlete for this as much of your lifespan i just didn't want i didn't want you thinking that i invited you on and not being able to come clean i gotta be a man dude i gotta say it up front i gotta say it to you directly i gotta make sure that you understand i got nothing but respect for you i think you're a fantastic fighter i guess my last thing is i want to ask you is chamayev or Bilal? which one because like are you going 85 you going 70 because you're great in both as we saw against Bilal. i mean against chamayev i mean um, just to finish up what you were saying uh, okay. uh, just now, just, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. And you get to a place in life where you, as a man, you understand that and you're able to, to just deal with it. I actually just, okay. I actually just had to do that with uh, Canelo. So I saw you know, that I clip. Just, I, I, yeah, I just had an interview with him to where I actually had, um, pound for pound, to where I actually had to come have that talk with him. So I get that 100%. But to answer your question before I go, either one, Chamayev or Bilal, I don't want to, don't care. Got they it. get healthy, they're both in trouble. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, hey, John, you want to wrap us? Buddy? Last thing I want to say is, Kamaro, thank you for coming on. You've always been a gentleman. You are the standard of what a fighter should be as a person. You are fantastic. Thank you for everything. And I want you to know that I did say that Alexander Volkanovsky's passed you in the pound for pound, and your manager, Ali, jumped my shit because of it. So he is on your side. So I just want you to know that. As you should. You you take care, my man, and thank you for your time, brother. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. 